We've been building to this moment for six long years since Tom King took over as the Batman writer. Along the way, we had Batman 50, one of the biggest bait and switches in DC Comics history. A lot of people were pissed off. A lot of people felt they got bamboozled by DC and Tom King when they didn't do an actual wedding for that issue. We also got Tom King being removed very early from the Batman series, about two and a half years ago. And then a year and a half ago, we got Batman Catwoman, which was supposed to end and be the climactic conclusion to Tom King's Batman run. So we've been working towards this for several years now. And here to talk to me about that is the Batman expert himself. Josh, how you doing, Josh? Uh, I would be better if we weren't talking about Tom King's Batman. <laughs> uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I, I, I think this is going to be an interesting conversation because I, I think we have uh, some strong opinions on this. And of course, we are right. <laughs> I have some very strong opinions on this one. Yeah. I came away exceptionally unimpressed. I think that this entire 12 issue series should have been an annual Absolutely. There is so much filler in this. There's three different stories and three timelines going on. And the only one of consequence that really ties into Tom King's Batman run is the two getting married. And that could have been an annual with the amount of content in there. He probably could have done that and it wouldn't have been so bad. But the throwing into the extra stories really ends up throwing this uh, story off equilibrium. It just It's all over the place. We get this final issue, the big conclusion... And we finally get a Batman wedding. The funny thing is, is Tom King tweeted the other day when this issue came out about like, for those of you who have waited, it's finally here or whatever it is. But referring to the wedding, not necessarily referring to the issue, he was referring to the wedding. And I think he put something like, you're cordially invited. And I, I my immediate thought was, I wonder how many people are like, fuck you, Tom King. Whether, whether the whole issue number 50, Batman number 50 was his idea or not to do it that way. I, at this point, it's almost like rubbing it in that like, hey, they're getting married because this book does not matter and nothing has happened. Well, nothing of value has happened anyways. Adam West essentially presides over the wedding and they get the bat package and then everything's a bat pun that goes with the bat package for this wedding. Kind of anticlimactic. We do get Superman showing up with Lois. Uh, I, I kind of like that part, but that was probably the high point of the entire comic book. You can't miss this opportunity, but you got the bat pun and the bat package. So, yes, you do. <laughs> No, that's a different book, Wes. That was uh, that was uh, Batman Damned. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, you have Superman and Lois show up, and it kind of harkens back to probably one of the better moments of Tom King's run, Date Nights and Last Rites or something like that. But it was a, a double date with Bruce and Selina and, and Clark and Lois. And, you know, that was one of the moments that was actually really good in his book. It wasn't driven uh, with, with uh, a comic book writer story. It was just an aside. Uh, but the characterization was done pretty damn well in that book. So, you know, Tom King can do things right. And that moment here was was nice. And I kind of liked the play of Bruce being like, okay, if he comes in talking about hope, though, and then you have Clark show up talking about a river, and then he's telling a story about the river on Krypton, and then he ends with, I I'm talking about hope, Bruce. And it's just it just cuts there. So I thought that was actually done well. The rest of it's just as big a mess as this entire 12-issue series has been. Yeah. The big focal point hasn't been really Batman. He's been kind of a side character. This is a Catwoman story. I guess her trials and tribulations along the way with her relationship. There's been a lot of really bad mischaracterization about Selena Kyle within this comic book series. We get that once again, front and center really with her relationship with her daughter, Helena, where she's kind of manipulating her and making her throw away evidence that implicates her in a murder of Joker down in Florida and whatnot. I just thought it's like, does she hate her daughter? Cause that's the way it comes off in this, this book. Uh, yeah, it, you know, if Batman Catwoman ac accomplished anything, it was definitely a, a character assassination for Selina Kyle, because the way that Tom has written her in this book has just been so bad. Uh, and it's weird because it's it's a complete change from how he was writing her in the Batman title. In the Batman title, she was OP and couldn't do anything wrong. And now she is the most terrible person you could ever meet. Like, I don't understand why Batman would have married her because she's that bad. And forget stealing stuff bad. She's just a terrible human being in terms of her interactions with other people, but especially the people that she, quote unquote, would love, um, including her daughter. But, it, you know, there's so many things that are that are wrong here. Like she's killing she kills people and has no problem with it. Um, she she the way she you mentioned it, but the way she talks to Helena, her daughter, is just so I wouldn't talk to a normal hu hu human being like this, much less my own child. And she just completely demeans her and disrespects her and talks down to her. And it's it just gross. I didn't like reading it. I don't like how she was depicted in this book. Um, and I, I was hoping for something better than this at the very least. And, and it did not happen. 
Well, and that's not the only kind of weird moment with with Selena Kyle. We also find out apparently she and uh, the the Phantasm apparently were consorting the whole time, and and Batman and Bruce Wayne live with this guilt of what had happened, like his entire life, and they had a plan to get let her get away with, and they're just sitting on a beach like having some Mai Tais and it's like, this is really strange. I don't think it comes off as like she hated Bruce Wayne, but it doesn't come off like she loved him. At all. Yeah, no. And that's part of the problem. And this whole Andrea Beaumont, you know, Phantasm thing is super weird because I, I finished this and I was, I literally sat down with this book and I was like, what was the story here? And, and look, part of this is because I've read it out in pieces over a period of time that a lot of the finer details I'm not remembering. And there was a moment where I thought I should sit down and read all this together so I can make sure I understand the story, but I don't want to, cause it's terrible, but like she's introduced and then she's killed. And then her son is kidnapped by the Joker. And then uh, it, there's just, there's, there's so much weird things that I, I don't understand what the point of this was other than this, other than being able to have the clout to say, I brought Andrea Beaumont, the phantasm into comics and it wasn't worth it. Not really. And then there's another moment with Batman. Obviously he's kind of a oh. side character, but you got to trash him in here. He's got this point where he's talking to Selena and they're kind of on the bed and he's like, my stupid parents being murdered by that stupid gut and these stupid pearls. And it's like, I don't get even what he's trying to go for as far as the characterization. Like, I don't understand what the point was, but it feels so out of place. It immediately makes you like hate the book. Oh yeah. It makes you hate the book. It made me mad. Now, if there's one scene that made me mad or one panel that made me mad, it was definitely this panel. Um, Cause it's not Bruce. Like his whole life is, is that moment is the foundation of everything that he does. And he wouldn't be talking about his stupid parents and his the stupid gun and the stupid pearls. It, he'd be talking about maybe like crime and, and how crime is stupid. And I get that that is kind of what Tom King is trying to reference here, but he fails miserably in, in how he executes it. Because this, this just reflects negatively on Bruce's outlook of his parents. And it's almost like, I hate you guys that this happened because now I'm doing this and I hate my life. And and that's kind of how Tom King has always written Batman is as if he has this disdain for what he does. And that's not Batman at all. Batman feels good about what he does. That's why he does it. Um, it, it was just a, just a low blow to Batman fans. And what pisses me off even more is, you know, that if you go and ask Tom King, he probably thinks that was an excellent moment. Oh, yeah, I don't think that he's going to go out there and be like, you know what? In a moment of self-reflection, I've realized that Batman Catwoman was actually trash, <laughs> which I think a lot of people kind of come away with. If you look at the, the scores on Comic Book Roundup, it's oh, basically yeah. being annihilated by readers. And then the critics themselves aren't scoring it very well either. You don't get a whole lot of comic books that score outside the green. This one's in the yellow and then into the red when it comes to the viewers themselves. Now, as far as Tom King, let's talk about what, whether or not he was successful. So this is what Tom King said in May of 2019 when he talked about what Batman and Catwoman was going to be. Batman and Catwoman is a chance to do what Morrison and Quietly did in Batman and Robin, launch an ambitious, accessible, beautiful, thrilling new series that concludes years of stories and defines what Batman is, can, and will be. Other than being a beautifully illustrated comic book, specifically when Clay Mann is on there, I don't think he accomplished any of that at all. Like none of it, none of it. Cause none of this to me even resonates with what Batman can be. It, it, it felt like a nail in the coffin of everything that we knew and love about Batman. So it, it does the opposite. And you know, <clears throat> What uh, Morrison and Quietly did on, on Batman is they they legitimately set out a new era because when they took over Batman and started writing the book, uh, and especially when they did Batman and Robin, they were taking, uh, you know, supporting characters like Dick Grayson, like Tim, like Damien, and even Steph, and they put them on a pedestal and said, here's how they're capable. They're not perfect. They're going to have to learn. You know, these are where their shortcomings are. But they gave them the ability to be heroes, and there is nothing heroic in this book from any character at all. I imagine a lot of people really are disappointed because sure you do get the wedding, but it's just so convoluted how they get here. It's jumping around these three times. We do introduce the phantasm. As you mentioned, I think the Joker kidnapped a kid, gave the kid to the phantasm, Andrea Beaumont to raise and then killed the kid. So Andrea Beaumont became the phantasm to get revenge and then faked her own death made Bruce feel bad. And then Catwoman told Andrea Beaumont, don't worry about it. I'll kill Joker for you in about 30 years. Yeah. 
Uh, pretty much. And, and look, if you haven't been reading this book, part of the reason it's so hard to follow the story is the, the book compiles pretty much three different timelines. And then within those timelines, you're doing time jumps in those timelines from issue to issue. So nothing is linear at any point. Uh, but you don't even have like setup in reveals that make sense. Like there, you don't get the story. Like they never actually have Andrea and Catwoman discussing, you know, a plan for how they want to take care of Joker. You just have random crap happen. Andrea Beaumont fakes her death when it's just like, oh, okay. But I, I'm trying to remember. Even in the moment, I think you just think she got killed, and it's not until this last issue that you find out no, she actually faked her death, and they had this plan all along. But you don't even know what the actual plan was. It was just that the Joker's dead. And even Andrew is like, well, as long as he's as long as he's dead, that's all that matters. Yeah, and I guess she was just waiting for Batman to die because she couldn't kill Joker until if, as long as he was around because he would put her in prison. But I guess she knew her daughter Helena wouldn't as long as she manipulated her emotionally. I guess to keep her out of prison. It's like I don't understand what the point of that story is in there to define the relationship of Batman and Catwoman, other than to say that Selena Kyle is a snake. And was willing to play the long game and kind of manipulate and lie to Bruce Wayne, the love of her life. Like, I don't I don't understand uh, what that point was. I don't get the Joker, Catwoman, Batman thing. It felt like it was supposed to be a love triangle about halfway through. You know, you got the one moment where Bruce Wayne says, you know, I can smell Joker on you. Like, hey, yeah, you just well. had sex with Joker kind of thing. Was that the point of the comic book that she had to make a choice between Bruce Wayne and Joker? I don't know. Like I, I've walked away not knowing what Tom King's goal was with this. And, and, you know, I can look at his Batman run and I can understand what he was shooting for as much as I didn't like it. I still know what he was going for this. I don't know what he was going for. I don't know what the point of the story is. I don't know what the theme of the story is. It's just all over the place. It's unfocused. Um, it's written poorly and you've just got random shit happening from here to there. And if I guess if one thing actually carried through that felt like it carried through for the most part, it was this kind of love triangle. Wait, is this really Batman's daughter? Or is it Joker's daughter? And then it just kind of gets like tied up and abandoned in the last two issues. So I, I don't know what the point of this book was other than to piss people off. Yeah, it's crazy that they, they made people wait two and a half years to get the conclusion after the end of Tom King's Batman run was over. They waited four years until after the conclusion of Batman 50, you finally get the wedding or whatever. And it's like so much stuff has happened with Batman at this point. We're on the third writer essentially starting next month. It'll be yep. Chip Zdarsky is the Batman writer. So we'll be, be through Tynan Williamson and on to Zdarsky. Like, what is this even here for? Maybe it sells some comic books and whatnot, but I don't think anyone's going to find this a meaningful conclusion to anything they thought that started out well. At they all. probably should have just let it be in that Batman annual number two. I think that was a great exploration about the time and the love life, the, the romance between Selena Kyle and Bruce Wayne. That is a beautifully illustrated, beautifully well uh, executed comic book on every level. Like they should have just left it there. But it feels like he was so obsessed with this relationship. He just couldn't let it die. And he kind of ends up in the end proving all of his critics right, saying, dude, you're a fucking hack. You don't know yeah. what you're doing. You don't have a good grasp on Batman. You got it right one time in an annual, and then you fucked it up every other time you tried to do it. Uh, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, in, in, you know, you said he, he's a hack, and I, I think, you know, he's kind of proven that he is to a degree because I feel like he's got – he's a one-trick pony. He goes to the exact same writing tropes. Um, he uses the same techniques or, or methods that are meant to be used semi-frequently to add effect. But when you do it every single issue for every single book that you do, um, you know, it kind of defeats the purpose and it loses its, its luster. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, you know, completely missed the mark and you're right. He should have just left it with Batman annual two. I, what, I think what he was hoping to accomplish with this book completely failed that, that single issue did it way, way better. Um, and then beyond that, like, I think he thought that giving us the wedding at this point was going to be this big win for him. And it's not because once you go outside of this book, like they're not together. I mean, Batman and Catwoman aren't doing anything together. You got Batman making out with Talia. They haven't discussed their marriage except for like, or engagement or relationship, except for one like brief moment. And so they're on a break. Yeah. On in Ram So they took a break in Tynan. It was brought up once in Ramby's Catwoman and it hasn't been touched since. Yeah, I don't think that uh, whatever they were trying to get out of this, I don't think was accomplished. It was an enormous waste of time 
it wasn't executed very well. And he does have a better Batman story going on right now with Killing Time. But even that's kind of start, starting to fall apart. At, at some point, Tom King has had enough opportunities with Batman. By the time yep. Killing Time is over, he's going to have written well over 100 issues of Batman comic books. And there are some high moments in there. There are some good quality stories here and there. But essentially leading up to Batman 50, I would say around number 45, maybe 44, it goes off the rails. And it just continues to go further and further off the rails over time. Mm-hmm. And that continues on and kind of concludes into Batman Catwoman. Give the character up and move on. You've got yep. some interesting things going on. He just he needs a better editor. That's what it is. Ever since Mark Doyle was fired by Tom King, his books have gone to shit. He yeah, hasn't had a really well executed story since Mark Doyle left. That's because Mark Doyle was not afraid to tell him no. Well, yeah, I mean that's the reason he fired him. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, things didn't have to go this far off the rails. There was a chance for Tom King's Batman, even though there were some issues prior to maybe issue 45 that weren't great. But for the most part, after issue 50, it kind of dies. I sat down with a good friend of mine that really loves Batman, and we talked about how Tom King could have saved this Batman run. If Mark Doyle was there, I think they would have been able to do it. But Tom King, on his own with a bunch of yes men, went off the tracks. But it could have been better. We talk about it right here. 